The Ectromoi were a specific group of soldiers within a larger Greek hoplite phalanx, serving a very specific role within that larger military unit. The Ectromoi's role with the phalanx was either an offensive or defensive option. Phalanxes, especially those fighting against skirmishers of the east, were extremely slow moving. This meant that they were giant slow moving targets for skirmishers that could simply outpace the slow moving hoplites, all the while pelting them with arrows and javelins. You see, the phalanx itself could not chase these fast skirmishers off. They were too heavily armed and armoured, and if they left the safety of numbers that is the phalanx, there is more of a chance of being caught in the crossfire. Simply put, the phalanxes needed a way of driving off the skirmishers while still being in formation. So the hoplites came up with a rather interesting solution. They found which of them were the fastest and most agile runners, armed them lightly and gave them the job of running out of the phalanx, chasing off the even more lightly armoured skirmishers, and then returning to the phalanx once the job was done allowing the phalanx to continue its slow plod forward. As a result of this role, these hoplites earned the name Outrunners, or Ectromoi. Arms and Armour As the Ectromoi were hoplites, they had to run quickly and maintain their agility. They had to wear lighter armour than their hoplite comrades. As a result, they replaced the heavy bronze cuirass with reinforced leather armour, layered in bronze plates and cloth to give it some strength. Eventually, though, hoplites discovered that this made no difference as there seems to have been an increase in missile penetrating power around the time. As a result, the Ectromoi are often betrayed as just wearing a simple tunic. This gave the Ectromoi more speed compared to their hoplite comrades, thus allowing them to chase off skirmishes. In terms of helmets, the Ectromoi wore what was the most fashionable helmet of the day for hoplites. Around this time there was a shift away from the famous Corinthian helmet, as it was essentially a bell worn on the soldier's head, thus meaning it was extremely disorientating, especially when hit. Gradually, hoplites began to prefer more open-faced helmets. One of these was the Attic Helmet. The Attic Helmet, also known as the Athenian Helmet, was a type of helmet that was commonly used by Greek hoplites during the Classical period. It was named after the region of Attica, where Athens is located, and it was made from bronze. The helmet featured a large cheek guard that extended down to protect the face and neck and it also had a nose guard and a plume holder on top. The Attic Helmet was designed to provide excellent protection for the head and face, while also allowing for good visibility and ventilation. The Attic Helmet was an essential piece of the equipment for hoplites, who were heavily armed soldiers that formed the backbone of Greek armies. Hoplites were known for their use of phalanx formation, a tightly packed formation of soldiers armed with long spears and shields that were highly effective against enemy infantry. The Attic Helmet was crucial for protecting the hoplite's head and face from blows from enemy weapons, such as swords, axes and arrows. It also helped to create a unified and intimidating appearance for the hoplite soldiers, which could have a psychological impact on their enemies. This helmet was a lot more open than the Corinthian helmet, thus meaning the user wasn't deafened when the helmet was struck, whilst also allowing the wearer to hear what was going on. Some models of the Attica helmet did have nose guards. However, there was little point to them, as the shield usually protected the majority of the face. Cheek guards, however, were fairly popular for hoplites, which makes sense if a spear or arrow glanced past the shield. In terms of shields, the Ectromoi usually used regular hoplon. 
The hoplon, also known as the aspis, was the iconic shield used by ancient Greek hoplites in battle. It was made from wood and covered in bronze or leather. The hoplon was circular and measured approximately three feet in diameter. It was designed to be held by a leather strap, known as the porpax, that was attached to the center of the shield and wrapped around the arm of the hoplite. This allowed the warrior to hold the shield securely in place, while also leaving their other hand free to hold a spear or sword. The hoplon was not just a defensive tool, but also an important offensive weapon. The bronze or metal facing of the shield was often used to bash and strike enemies, whilst the shield's shape allowed for coordinated movements with other hoplites to create a phalanx formation. This was a tactic where the warriors would interlock their shields and move together as a unit, creating an impenetrable wall of protection that was difficult for enemies to breach. The hoplon was an integral part of ancient Greek warfare, and its use in battle was both symbolic and practical, as it represented not only the strength and unity of the hoplite phalanx, but also the individual warrior's bravery and skill. The reason why the Ectromoi used this shield was that they were still hoplites. Their main role in the battle was to fight as hoplites in a phalanx formation. Now the hoplon is a very heavy shield, however as a combat shield it is incredible. In terms of weaponry, the Ectromoi were still hoplites, so they used the exact same weapons. The main weapon of the hoplites, and in turn the Ectromori, was the Dory Spear. The Dory Spear was a weapon commonly used by the ancient Greeks, particularly by the infantry soldiers known as hoplites. The spear was around 7 to 9 feet in length, and was made of ash or cornel wood. The spearhead was typically made of bronze and was leaf-shaped with a long narrow point for piercing through armour. The Dory Spear was a highly effective weapon in ancient Greek warfare due to its length, allowing the hoplite to keep their enemies at a distance while still delivering powerful thrusts. It was also useful for pushing back enemy shields, creating openings for the hoplites to attack. The hoplite formation known as the Phalanx was designed around the use of the Dory Spear, with soldiers forming a wall of overlapping shields and spears. The secondary weapon that was used was a short sword. Two swords were widely used, but the most common in the infantry was a leaf-shaped sword called a Xiphos. It was known for its versatility, speed and manoeuvrability in close combat. The sword's blade was typically made of bronze or iron, with a double-edged leaf-shaped blade that tapered to a point. Its hilt was designed with a curved grip that allowed for a firm grip and ease of use. The sword was also often adorned with decorative details such as engravings or inlaid precious metals, indicating the wealth and status of its owner. The Xiphos sword was a popular weapon among the ancient Greek soldiers, particularly the hoplites the sword was carried alongside the hoplite's primary weapon, the Dory Spear, and was used in close combat or as a backup weapon for when the spear was no longer practical. Another less common sword for the infantry was the Coppice. The Coppice sword was a weapon of ancient Greece that was popular among the cavalry and warriors of the time. The sword was characterized by its curved blade which had a single edge that curved forward towards the point. The blade was typically made of iron or bronze and was designed to be a versatile weapon that could be used for both slashing and thrusting attacks. One of the unique features of the coppice sword was its distinctive forward curved blade, which made it a particularly effective weapon for close combat. The curve of the blade allowed the user to deliver powerful slashing blows that could easily penetrate armour and inflict serious damage on their opponent. 
Additionally, the sword's curved shape also made it easier to draw from its sheath and to deliver quick, powerful strikes with minimal effort. The coppice sword was a popular weapon among ancient Greek warriors and was used extensively in battles and military campaigns throughout the region. In battle. In battle, the Ectromoi would serve primarily as hoplites. However, when bogged down by skirmishes, the Ectromoi would leave the safety of the phalanx to drive off these skirmishes. As they were more heavily armed than these skirmishers, they would make short work of these lightly armed troops. Once the threat was driven off, the Ectromoi would then return to the phalanx and fight as regular hoplites. When in a phalanx, the Ectromoi would fight as follows. The hoplites would line up in ranks and files, with each soldier standing shoulder to shoulder with the next. The phalanx would advance towards the enemy, using the weight of the formation to push through their lines. The front ranks of hoplites would thrust their spears at the enemy, while the rear ranks would hold their spears up in defensive position to protect their comrades in front. The asper shields would also be interlocked, forming a protective wall for the soldiers. The phalanx was highly effective in its time, due to the discipline and coordination required to maintain the formation. However, there are some arguments about how the phalanx fought. Some argue that the phalanx was highly inflexible and could only fight in a straight line, making it vulnerable to flanking attacks. Others argue that the phalanx was highly adaptable and could change its formation to meet different threats. Some also argue that the phalanx relied too heavily on its front ranks, leaving the rear vulnerable to attack. What is interesting is if the Ectromoi were caught outside of the phalanx, the Ectromoi's lack of armour would mean that they would be annihilated by the heavier weapons of enemy infantry. As a result, when a counter-attack came, the Ectromoi had to run back to the safety of the phalanx. Xenophon found regular use for the Ectromoi on his march back to Greece. This was because he and his army of 10,000 were being regularly harassed by Persian archers, to the point where his archers were collecting spent arrows from the enemy and then firing them back at them. As the Greeks had no cavalry to drive them off, the Ectromoi stepped up to the challenge and became essential to Xenophon's army. Eventually, their skill, together with Xenophon's leadership, allowed the 10,000 Greeks to get back home safely. Thank you for watching and listening to our videos. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Or, if you really like the channel, consider supporting us on Patreon. There, for as little as $1 a month, you'll gain access to an ever-expanding variety of exclusive Ancient History Guide content not found anywhere else online. All donations go directly back into the channel, helping us on our campaign to conquer YouTube. All sources are listed and linked in the description below. I've been the Ancient History Guy, and as always, I'll be seeing you later.